Well, hello, YouTube. All right, so I just want to say that my other videos have always dealt with my front speakers and rear speakers. This is a 2022 Ford Bronco, and I wanted to add more bass just to even things out. I've already got a great sounding stereo, but I wanted to add something aftermarket that would be easy and compatible with the newer style screens because you don't want to rip up that. You just don't want to touch that dash. It's a pain in the butt. There's other videos that show you a three hour procedure, but you can avoid all that stuff with this. I did a lot of product reviews and research. I'm still a kicker fan and several reasons. So this is the 46 HS10 by kicker. So it's a 10 inch sub. It doesn't need any remote turn on. The remote turn on is the thing that would go into your head unit. So in order to power this, you're basically gonna run a power wire from your battery from the front of the truck all the way to the back of the truck. So there is a little bit of disassembly and I'm gonna get into that in a minute, but let me just tell you why I like this. You don't need a remote turn on. The power on this system will come from your front two subs. So your six and a half subs, your left and your right, are gonna provide this thing with the remote turn on power. This thing will sense the speakers when they're on the on position and it'll actually fire the sub for you. So that way you're not gonna have to worry about a remote turn on and the thing will turn off when your car vehicle turns off also. It also is safe for your start and stop. I've disabled mine, but again, I can hit a button and it will continue to work because this thing is built in to know that it has that capability. So it's basically running the whole system off of your factory system without tearing into the dash. I know there's other videos out there that I've done where I've taken apart the kick panels. So I'm not gonna go into all of that today. I just wanna say I reviewed this product. It works great. And I'll show you a little trick that I did so I can do some stuff aftermarket too. So this is my fuse block back here. So this red power wire goes all the way to the front battery. I ran that through this container all the way through this channel, under that, up against the rocker panels, all the way to the front um, speaker. And then my amp is powered off of a 15 amp fuse off of this. Now this fuse block is actually pretty cool. So if I ever wanna add any accessories back here in the Bronco, I've got power and that says a lot. So if I ever wanna add like a cooler, something other like lights, um, you name it. Any accessory I wanna add in the back, I've got power right here and I don't have to worry about it. And this fuse block is 100 amps per six circuits. I'm only using one right now. And again, I'm not even really pulling anything. It's a 15 amp fuse. So I know this is a lot of information really fast, so I'm gonna slow it down. So what you're gonna need, um, I went to Crutchfield and I talked to them for 45 minutes or so. They sent me the information on the kicker 40, 46 HS10. Um, I also looked at the Posi products, but the wire connections are, are basically very simple. They give you 20 feet of 18 gauge speaker wire. And what I also did was off of Amazon, I bought that fuse block. It's like $35. I can link a description. Um, and I also bought a four gauge, two channel complete Scorsi C um, amp wiring kit. So I've got everything back here. And on the bottom of your seat belt, there's a ground. So I grounded my ground wire for my amp there. It's, it's very simple. I mean, you've got these connections here, which is basically like a plug and plug and play. Um, one of the things I do want to point out is this lever. It needs to be on DC. Um, the kicker instructions are clear if you're able to read all that stuff, but 
this needs to be set on DC and that'll read your input without the remote turn on. And then you can adjust your levels. That's pretty basic stuff. Um, you can see my setup right here upside down, unfortunately. Um, I've got everything pretty slow or pretty low. And again, it's, it's pretty fairly easy. I've had this thing in for about a month now before I made the video just to make sure everything was working. And I haven't had any problems. I've set the gain a little bit um, lower um, just because it was drowning out some of the other songs that I listened to. But let me walk you up to the front of the car. Okay, so here we are at the front of the battery. Batteries has this nice accessory bar. Um, I've got another video where you can add these two nuts on here with the right sizes if you wanted to use those. Um, I just stuck with the original and just piggybacked off it. So again, this power cable has an inline fuse that's waterproof. Again, my amp is only gonna pull 15 amps. This thing is more than enough to power my, my Blue C system in the back. And then if you look, there is actually a rubber grommet here on the firewall to make this install for this battery cable or this power wire very simple. I just cut a slot um, through there. You walk over here and that comes out up top. It's a lot easier to see when there's daylight, but then if you look at my other videos, this is your driver's side six and a half. Um, I have these connectors here. So what you need to do, imagine this being connected to the back of your six and a half. These little guys here are called tappets. You basically twist that on and then you plug your 16 gauge wire into the back and screw it on. It's very, very simple. It's a lot simpler than what I've done in the past. I really like that product. Um, it's included from Crutchfield. It's called Tap It. Um, so you're gonna need to tie into this. Remember, take off this, that pops out. Use your socket wrench, get in there, and there's two of them. Pull this all out, pop this off, and now you're gonna be running your power wires and your left and right, driver's side and passenger side, front six and a half speakers down this channel. All right, so this is that 18 gauge wire I was talking about. And then I use normal speaker wire because I had a lot more of it for the passenger side. It doesn't matter, it's just speaker wire. Um, I had the other stuff laying around but it was easy for me to figure out the black one's driver side. So I've got that. I just wire that all the way through. You tape it every foot or so. It goes back through. Goes under this channel. This panel pops off. This panel pops off. Move the seat forward. This thing pops off also. And then you've got a clear shot all the way down to the back. Very simple. You don't have to do any other tie-ins, no remote turn on, you're not taking apart your dash. And again, look at that setup. It matches and it's not going anywhere. I should have tied in that left, sorry, the right corner, but you know what? It's not going anywhere. That thing, I've hit lots of bumps no problems and uh, I just want to say like the plastic matches it looks great it sounds great so again I should have showed you guys how to do this but I figured I didn't need to because my other videos are out there check those out parts one and two um, definitely check out part two because when I did my dash speakers I definitely ran into an issue where the kickers that I put up here um, needed base blockers. So I highly suggest putting base blockers up here just to make it sound really clear. And 
I'm fairly confident with this setup here that if you wire that first, then you wire your amp, you're protected. Just remember when you're running that power wire from the battery, always pull the fuse. You don't want to have a hot power wire in your hands and you get grounded. Doesn't feel good. So that's one of my only cautions. If you have an installer do this, you could buy all the parts. You could go to some big chain store and they could in install this for you. Um, but it just kind of gives you a little bit more confidence when you do things yourself. You know that you're taping the wires. You know that you're making all the connections right. You're doing all your testing. Um, and remember, left and right on the speakers, positive, negative. Um, when you're attaching that stuff, it always helps me to do the striped wire goes into positive. And I can usually tell the positive because it has the bigger blade going to the speaker. I don't know if that helps, but that's how I've always done it. Um, again, fairly easy install. I really enjoy this product. Uh, again, I'm not sponsored by Kicker, although I probably should be because I'm probably going to get a lot of likes and then sell them a lot of products because that type of system can go in pretty much anything aftermarket these days where you're not tearing into the dash. All you need access is to the speakers and then a power source. Um, I want to just say thanks to everybody for watching. I really enjoy all the views. Um, I'm not quite confident to put my face on anything yet. So all you see is one hand. And I will say this probably took me three or four hours just to get everything right. I didn't put it on the back because it was getting in the way. I really didn't want to put screws through the passenger seat. And you really want to limit how much play is on these wires. There's actually enough room here to when that seat comes back, it's not crimping those things and it's not putting any pressure. But when I had it up higher, with that 20 foot of wire that they provided me, it was a little tight. So if you want to make things like balanced and you wanted one here and one over here, you could do that. You could have two tens, fairly easy, fairly quick. I could wire one right now with this. So let's say I, for whatever reason, I want to add more bass. I don't want to, but hey, maybe my kids want this Bronco someday and they want to add more bass. Have at it. It's right there. Quick, easy, painless. Um, I think I'm pretty much done with this video. Again, there's other products out there on the market. I really like the Blue Sea stuff. It's very simple. It's durable. There's some waterproof options out there for like marine use and boating. I'm fairly certain this thing is not going to get damaged even if it got wet because it's already got a cover on it. It's in this little enclave, if you will. My little Bronco toolkit goes right over it. Very easy. Um, again, that was 100 amps per six circuit at 30 amps each. Definitely worth that. Even if you weren't adding a sub, you could add that to the back of your Bronco and basically open your possibilities up to a lot of other things back here. Um, again, I will link all of the description of the items that I used as best I can. But uh, yeah, hopefully this video helps. Let me know. I try to get back through my comments. A lot of people make weird comments like, why didn't you use something blue? What's blue back here? I don't know. So people add weird comments every once in a while. Not sure why, but it's YouTube. Anyway, thanks you guys. And for the record, I have not had people in my Bronco doing that kind of dance. Although I would like to, I better not say that. Um, yeah, go off-roading and go through the water with my Bronco. I'm going to have to add a snorkel for that. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, this is 
360 watts, very, very durable sound system. It's rugged, it's loud, it gets the low frequencies like you like, and it's a by kicker, start stop. You don't have to have remote turn on. It's great. Plus, if it doesn't work, send it back to Crutchfield and they'll refund your money or send you another one. So it's a win win. Hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as you like the other ones. I'll try to keep doing more, but I'm still waiting for hard tops to come out because there's a lot I'd like to do. Again, thank you. And uh, that's it. One other thing that I didn't talk about, Kicker will supply this remote base knob. You can put that somewhere on your dash. I've got my level set, don't really need that. They give you the wires for it. I didn't wanna to have to run additional stuff that I might bump with my knee. Um, they also supply you with this inline, I think this is like a 14 gauge power wire for the amp. I bypassed that with my Blue C system and, and just ran a 14 gauge wire to my amp and uh, no problems, no issues. So the other thing that I was talking about before was when I ordered from Crutchfield, they gave me like more than I need. I think I had like eight of these, but uh, yeah, you're always gonna have leftover junk and uh, it helps when you have installs later on, uh, such as this blue remote turn on wire. So yeah, I like their little stop. We can help. I probably need help with the videos more than I do this stuff. All right, that should be it. There's my other baby. Woo-wee! Get that one out in some videos.